Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And with the New Year's having just passed, I, I figured it's time to do a small little video about New Year's resolutions. None of these are important for the record. None of these are important. None of these are a big deal. Honestly, this is just another opportunity to talk about a bunch of board game related things under the guise of New Year's resolutions. But for those, for those of you who want some ideas for game related New Year's resolutions that may or may not be fun, here are five for you. Starting off the bat with the very first one, which is something I've talked about a lot, and I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this, or at least the hows, the whys, all of that, because I've done it before, and frankly, I will again, but number one is keep a leaner collection. If you're looking for a New Year's resolution to start you off right, look into trying to keep a leaner collection. Now, off the bat, if this is not for you, this isn't for you, that's fine. Any of these five may not be for you. These are just ideas, and... Hey, I think they're fun, and I think they're opportunities, but let's go for it. Number one is keep a leaner collection. The idea that more often than not, the amount of games you actually own versus the amount of games you actually play, those numbers are very different. Uh, more importantly, very often you're holding on to games that you just don't need to for one reason or another. They, they're not doing what they were intended to do, and you have to decide what they were intended to do. Maybe they're there for the memories, the, the way your shelves look, and maybe they're meant to be playing, but whatever the reason is, check if the games are hitting those reasons. If they're there for the memories, are they actually triggering memories? If they're there so your shelves look pretty and beautiful, are your shelves looking pretty and beautiful? And if they're there for you to play, are you actually playing them? Are they the best games in the genre for you or not so much? They were just fun, but you're not going to pull them off a shelf and play them. Again, I'm not going to go into the dozens of ways you can actually try to do this, the ways you can prioritize, focus on what you're playing, focus on what you're not, focus on the best for each category. There's dozens of ways to try to look at this, but ultimately question for yourself, whether you can get by with fewer games. I'm not saying don't buy more games. You can still buy more games. I'm questioning whether you can get by on fewer games based on your current collection and where it's at. Buy more. Enjoy more. The hobby is constantly evolving and growing, but to a certain extent that also feeds into this reason. As you gather more, you eventually have to come to terms with the fact that sometimes you will have to get rid of some games if you want to actually live in your house. Number two is going to be playing more games. This is not entirely related to number one, but it does have an overlap. But it's the idea that this hobby, to a large extent, is about playing games. I'm not here to shame anyone who's not playing them or anyone who just likes them for whatever reason, but try playing more games in 2023. Try to figure out if there's an opportunity, if there's a way. Try to really engage with the hobby so much. I have a little mug. It's one of my mugs that shows up in videos here and there, but it's like, you know, seven things I love about the hobby. Talking about games, buying games, listening to games, watching videos about games, playing games. The idea that there's so many more facets to this hobby than purely playing games. I recognize that, and I know that, and I, I think that's a good thing. I think it gives us an opportunity to engage in different ways, to throw that video on the background up of your favorite content creator like you right now, the video you're watching, whatever it is, to, to in some way engage in the hobby more than just playing because you can't always table a game. And so I'm happy that there are so many ways to fall in love with the hobby we're in. I just saw a post last week about somebody who was talking about how they don't really know why they do it because they don't actually play their games ever, but they love the premise of the hobby and so they keep collecting games. And some people might look at that and say, well, why are you doing that? And I look at that and say, hey, if it's bringing you joy, then what's the big deal? I mean, you have to be mindful. You always have to ensure that you're engaging in the hobby in a helpful way, in a, in a healthy way, in a way that doesn't hurt you. But the ways that bring you joy, that's kind of up to you. So engage how you want, but still potentially look at 2023 as the opportunity to play more games. Again, I have a full video on that of how to play more games. There's a bunch of tips and tricks up my sleeve as far as different ways to do that. I'm actually going to be talking about one of those later in this video. But maybe look into ways to play more games. Maybe look into ways to get another game tabled at night, another game tabled in the morning, playing games online, whatever tips and tricks you want. But it's a fun hobby. Sometimes it's fun to play more games. Number three is going to be a very self-serving one, and I'm going to keep it fairly brief because of that. But number three is support your favorite content creator. And it doesn't have to be me. I said favorite content creator. It does not have to be at all. But whoever it is you, whoever it is whose content you're appreciating and enjoying, whatever it is, whether it's that, you know, the how to, the, the how to play from Rodney Smith, because he does a ton of content. I don't know if you know this, but Watch a Played has a Patreon. Whether it's the Dice Tower who puts out the most content from everyone in the hobby and they have a regular yearly Kickstarter, but they also, they also have a, um, they also have a YouTube membership and all those opportunities. Whoever your favorite content creator is, if you have been enjoying, well, free content from whoever it is that you're watching 
maybe this is the year that you sit there and say, you know what, $2 a month isn't the end of the world, or $5 a month isn't the end of the world, and now maybe it's an opportunity to give back and benefit from those you've enjoyed content from. This is not meant to be a big guilt trip. Uh, I did a, put out a full video earlier this week. Uh, I put out a full video earlier this week, I'll link to it down below, where I do talk about my own channel, but I don't, again, I don't want to heavily focus on this reason, because it, it is very self-serving, and so with that, we'll move into reason number four, which supports reason number two, which is reason number four, or opportunity, commitment, whatever you know it is, number four is log more plays. Log your plays this year. There's a variety of reasons to do so, but I do encourage it. I think it's a good thing, and first of all, it will feed into playing more games. When you start logging your plays, it's almost like a little bit of a challenge to yourself, and in fact, if you use BG Stats, it is a paid app. I don't get a commission. I do recommend it. It's what I use, but BG Stats, available on Android and iPhone, I think it's the go-to gaming app to log plays in general, although you can do so on Board Game Geek in general. There's lots of opportunities. I just think BG Stats is a good one, but it, it will give you challenges. It will give you insights, and those things help. Every year I look back at my plays for the previous year and I kind of want to beat my number. It gives me another incentive to, to log my plays. And every year, by the way, since I've started using this app like four years ago now, something like that, I have consistently logged more plays every single year, year after year. And part of that is that, that incentive to beat myself, to beat my own number, to get better at it. Does it matter at all? No, but it could be interesting. It could be interesting for a variety of reasons. You can see who you spend the most game time with. It could be interesting to see where you play your most games or what your most played games are. In my case, Cthulhu Death May Die for a long time was the most number of hours I had sunk into a single game. Until this year, in 2023, Gloomhaven finally beat that. Gloomhaven eclipsed that total because I've been going through Gloomhaven as a full campaign, and the 90 or 95 hours I have of Cthulhu Death May Die has been beaten by the 110 or so I have of Gloomhaven, between Gloomhaven and Jaws of the Lion combined for that matter, but still, it's a lot of hours into a game, and it's cool to see. You can see your own win rates, if you go ahead, this is really not an ad for BG Stats, I'm telling you it's not, but you can see your own win rate in ways that are fun, and I don't really care about win rate compared to others, I'm not trying to compare myself to others, but it is a little bit of a fun thing to see, hey, you know what, based on your plays, your expected win rate should be around 34%. It takes your average of player count, your games, all that. And then, like, look at that. I'm doing 43%, which is pretty cool. It also puts things in perspective because sometimes it's very easy to look at the numbers and think, hey, I don't win that much. But the practical reality is if, you're, if, you're, is if your average game is a four-player game, you only should be winning 25% of the time. So maybe 27% actually means you're outperforming your expected average. Obviously, that's a less exciting you know, stat if you're underperforming your expected average. But then, hey, you can still see you're having fun, what games you're playing, which games you want to play more of. You can also see, once you start doing this consistently, it's easy to look back and say, you know what, I've been doing this for four years now, which means I can look at the games in my collection and see that the last play I have of, I don't know, let's just make up a game. The last play I have of Lancaster might have been a game that I played 15 months ago. I can see that and I can question myself. Going back to reason number one, keeping a leaner collection, I can use logging my plays as an opportunity to see which games have I not played in a long time. And it's okay if I haven't, but do I want to re-examine whether that game actually does or doesn't have a spot in my collection? I don't know. We'll see. But logging your plays could be a fun one. I do recommend it. I think it's a fun thing to do, and it's a good resolution to start the new year off. Fresh start, 2023, you can do it. You don't need to do it. It doesn't matter. It's just a fun thing to do. Now, number five, resolution number five, and the last on this list is going to be trying something new in the hobby. Whatever that might be for you. Maybe it's solo gaming. Maybe you've tried solo gaming in the four briefly, but didn't really take off. Or maybe you haven't tried it at all. Maybe 2023 is the year you really give solo gaming a shot. And there's a bunch of ways to jump, jump into it. This top 10 list of any type of hobby or any type of sub-hobby within this hobby we have. There's a list of solo games. There's a list of what's to start off with. I highly recommend the Oniverse series as a great starting point if you want something lighter. And I highly recommend Spirit Island if you're looking, or The Loop for that matter, The Loop from Panasaurus Games, if you're looking for something a little heavier that will that give you a solid solo puzzle journey. I highly, The loop is great. The loop really is great. It's it's really, really great. Not an ad for the loop either. But that said, try something new in the hobby. Find an avenue of the hobby that hasn't been something that called your name or that you gave a little bit of an effort, but not really enough and see if it's for you. Again, that could be solo gaming. It could be war gaming. It could be co-op. It could be miniature heavy games that you wrote off as being those giant hunks of plastic that you have no interest in. If you've watched my channel enough, you know that I love Cthulhu Left May Die, I love Zombicide, I love all these big mini games. but what you might not know, because I, I talk about it here and there, but it doesn't come up often, is for a long time, I sneered at Zombicide. Sneered is probably a bit intense. I turned my nose up at Zombicide. Also, might be a bit intense, but genuinely, for a long time, Zombicide and the hordes of plastic they represented, they just weren't games for me. Zombicide existed, and I ignored it. I just didn't think I cared about a game that put giant plastic miniatures on your table. That wasn't for me. Give me Lahav, give me Pandemic, give me uh, El Grande. Don't give me giant hordes of plastic. Even though I like other games. I liked... I don't even know. 
I liked Kemet. I liked Cyclades. I liked other games that had some degrees of miniatures. But come on, come on, miniatures? I had no interest in that whatsoever. And then one day I played it. One day I played Zombicide. And I was like, wow, this game's actually pretty fun. And then I played it again. I was like, this game is really, really fun. And I really fell in love with that aspect of the hobby. And now miniature heavy games has become a big part of the games that I love. And so trying something new is always an opportunity. Solo gaming. Solo gaming is something I wrote off for years. I tried Friday, had no interest. I tried Space Hulk, Death Angel, had no interest. I tried a bunch of other small solo games here and there. And it wasn't something that worked for me. And then one day I woke up and played Spirit Island and something, something about Spirit Island just turned that corner for me and suddenly solo gaming, I mean just today, today alone, before, forget anything else, today I've played like six or seven solo games today. It just happened to be a day that worked out as, you know, I, I sat down and played solo games. It's a huge part of my hobby and it was something that I wrote off for quite some time. All that said, I, I genuinely have no interest in trying war gaming, so there's always, there always is some degree of a mountain that you're not interested in climbing. But that's what I have. That's what we have as far as five potential New Year's resolutions for you to experiment with. I'm sure you can come up with any others, or you can save your New Year's resolutions for things that are a little bit more important than board games. Not that board games aren't important. They're fun. They're excellent. They, I genuinely believe it's one of the best hobbies you can have. But also, these, all, these resolutions are all in good fun. They're not things you have to do. They're not things that matter significantly. They're not really things between you and your fellow friend or family member or whatever. Ways to improve the quality of your life in more meaningful ways. This is just a good bit of fun and something to entertain as we enter 2023. I'm looking forward to the next year. Thank you very much for being here, for watching the videos, for subscribing, for liking, all that stuff. I appreciate all of you. This is my fourth year, the beginning of my fourth year in content creation. It's been a fun ride and I'm very grateful to every one of you that's been a part of the journey. Thanks so much. Happy New Year's. And until next time, I hope you have a good one.